This is really how it all started, this little package of tools by Peter Norton, and then this instant bestseller, Sidekick, by Philippe Kahn. These are examples of utilities, those neat little programs that make life so much easier for a computer user. We're going to take a look at the newest utilities on today's edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, what we have running here is something called Sideways, a utility a lot of people are familiar with. What it lets you do is print out a Lotus spreadsheet horizontally rather than vertically, which of course makes a lot of sense, and it's something you couldn't do just through Lotus 123, hence a utility. Some utilities like this work with application software, others work with operating systems. I was wondering, as a guy who designed an operating <laughs> system, does it bother you when other guys come along and write utilities you never thought of in the first place? <laughs> Not really, because when you're designing an operating system, it's really hard to tell what people are really going to want, especially when you're trying to keep the memory requirement mm -hmm. really small. In the case of CPM, for example, one of the first utilities that came out was an undelete program, <laughs> <laughs> and that's to recover the programs you just deleted. And when you're designing an operating system, why would you want to undelete something you just deleted? <laughs> right. We're going to see some of the newest utilities on today's program, from disk optimizers to memory expansion emulators to something called an intuitive processor. First of all, we're going to begin with a background look at some of the past and present uses of utilities. To most computer users, utilities are convenient accessories that perform mundane computer housekeeping chores, like copying a disk or telling the time. But as files grow and applications become more complex, utilities take on new importance. The Laserite shop in Palo Alto, California, provides an elaborate array of electronic publishing services, from typesetting to graphic design. Laserite depends on a group of specialized utilities to organize and manipulate their customers' files. A utility called TOPS makes it possible to transfer IBM text files over their AppleTalk network to a Macintosh, where the files can be reformatted using another utility. To change the size of graphics while retaining the same proportions, the Laserite staff uses an electronic proportion wheel utility. And to support electronic publishing's PostScript language, a template utility. Like many computer users with hard disks, people at Laserite face the aggravation of mislabeled or misplaced files. A utility called Locator can recover them using just a single keystroke and trace the file's directory and subdirectory. In spite of their unglamorous reputation as program accessories, utility packages have grown in popularity and functionality, at least occasionally crossing the barrier from desktop organizers to mainstream software. Joining us now in the studio are Ed Tolson, president of SoftLogic of Manchester, New Hampshire. And next to Ed is Dale Siner, one of the co-founders of Executive Systems of Sherman Oaks, California. Gary? Ed, you and Dale have made a business out of selling utilities. How big a business is it? It's a pretty big business. Uh, there's a lot of holes in the operating system for uh, utilities such as these to uh, fill up. But Dale, how many customers do you have? <laughs> uh, we've sold over 100,000 copies of really? X3. Okay. That'd be really Good. Um, Ed, you've got a, a program here, it's Disk, disk Optimizer and also Double DOS for the shows, right? That's right. Okay, let's start off with Disk Optimizer and tell us what that does. Okay, well, Disk Optimizer is meant to keep your hard disk working as fast as possible. And the problem that it cures is file fragmentation. As a, okay, just to make sure people understand, tell us what you mean by file fragmentation. File fragmentation is, is the uh, process that occurs due to the fact that DOS stores files in, in individual packets called clusters. 
on this type of system, that each cluster is 2K. So if you have a 100K file, a program, then it can be literally in 50 different places mm -hmm. on the disk. And what Disk Optimizer does is? It makes all those pieces contiguous, so therefore the drive doesn't have to move around to seek each piece. And so you can load it faster. Exactly. Okay, show us how you do it. Okay, well the, the uh, Analyze program we use to determine um, what kind of shape our drive is in. And the Analyze program will show us on the screen in percentage the optimization for each of the files on there. So a file that's 100% optimized means that all its pieces are contiguous side by side. Fast so it's as possible. Now analyzing access. the hard disk drive here. Exactly. What do you find out? Okay, well, the, the ones that display in green are at 100%, and those files are contiguous. We have a few that are shown in red here, and those files are badly fragmented. Uh, if we had some that were borderline, they would show in yellow. Now, it says 0%. What does that mean next to the red files? That means that none of its clusters are contiguous. You know, your program could clean this up also, right? Exactly. And how, how would you do that? I know we don't have time to do it, but suppose you wanted to put everything into 100% well, optimization. Well, we, we would run the optimized program. We can tell the optimized to work on any drive, and it will go through and reorganize the information. It does it in a very safe fashion, redundantly allocating the information that's moving around. Mm -hmm. This one we worked on a floppy okay. in five seconds. Now what about double DOS? Can you show us that? Sure. Double DOS is a two-task multitasking system providing classic foreground background operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, uh, we can start up virtually any program. Okay, so you're going to run Lotus. Exactly. And uh, we can be working with it. And if we decide that we need to do something else, like if we were going to print out the spreadsheet or something, we could just go on back to work with something else. So you're going to type start it out here. Directory here. <laughs> right. That's the hard part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And start up our word star. So we could have word star running in here while we're printing out something out of Lotus exactly. at the same time. Exactly. And go up and back. That's right. Instantly back and forth between the two. Uh, do you have any problem with uh, file conflicts at all? Uh, no. Basically, uh, as long as you don't uh, try to edit the same file okay. at the same time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's hurt. let's go over to you. And you've got a couple of utilities too. Xtree and then something new called Hot. I want right. to ask you to show us what x does first. You just sort of take over the AT there. Okay. Well, x is a file and directory management program. Uh, we believe utilities should do two things, make the computer easier to use and save time. x is a big si time saver because it shows you clearly what your directory structure looks like, and it makes it very easy to move files between directories, copy, delete, rename files in groups mm -hmm. or individually. Okay, so the usual mess of not knowing where all this stuff right. is in your hard disk. Okay, so what, what, so is, what is it showing us? Here it shows you the directories and subdirectories in the top window. In the bottom window, there are the files within that subdirectory. I could blow that up like that. And I can also show all the files in all directories. Regardless of directory, these are all the files. And you can sort those files in a variety Alphabetically, of ways? by extension, by size, or by date and time. Mm -hmm. and, and how long have you been selling X3? Uh, about 18 months. OK. Mm -hmm. what's, it, what's the cost of product like that, by the way? 49 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. OK, now, the, a new thing you have is Hot, another utility. And if I can ask you to get Hot up. OK. Let me and show us what that does. Hot is a. That's what I thought. <laughs> we have a problem that Double DOS um, didn't give me enough memory to run hot in oh. this, in this uh, section. Okay. Can you disable it? Uh, hot is an intelligent menuing system. It, uh, first of all, for the, easy, for the novice user, it automatically builds menus for you. You don't have to do anything. It'll build menus on the applications that you already have on your system. For the more experienced user, he can go in and tailor those, ap those menus to whatever his application needs are. It's a complete menu editor to add items and move the menus around. And uh, it also has some pop-up utilities with uh -huh. it. Will we be able to get this up here, you think, Ed? It was too complicated. No, we're all set. Okay, How are we so doing? <laughs> so you're, you're getting rid good, of double DOS. <laughs> and now let's see if we can get it. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah, really? laughs> it's a great example. <laughs> OK, there we go. Well, okay. we did it. OK. Here's hot. And, um, uh, a few moments ago, I uh, built this menu system automatically based on the applications you have on this hard disk. And you have communications, database, et cetera, spreadsheet, utilities, uh -huh. word processing. And you can go to any one of these. In word processing, you have four word processors on this system. Easy, 
uh, the hot one word, which comes with hot, okay. word star and word perfect. And again, by running hot, it automatically built all these applications for us. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, we're out good. of time right now. Thank you very much. In just a minute, we're going to take a look at a new package of utilities for D-Base users. We'll see a utility that lets you pretend that you have an extended memory board. Now, there's a guy who writes very good utilities, and he gives them away. We're going to find out more about him from Wendy Woods. Vernon Berg is a prolific producer of utilities for the IBM PC and compatibles. He's got some 50 programs to his credit, programs that file, sort, archive, and even aid in programming itself. He's been writing them since 1983. When you need something done, uh, a utility program to you know, convert a file or to print it out or, or whatever you want done with, uh, you usually can't find them. You, you, commercial programs don't do those kind of things. They're pretty much word processors, data, database programs, something like that. So you end up writing them, either you know, starting out with basic or what I like to write in now is assembler because it produces smaller, faster programs. Vernon is best known for LIST, a utility which allows you to view and search text files from DOS level without the hassle of having to load a word processing program. Like all of his software, List is free. People need only to write him or call his electronic bulletin board, which operates 24 hours a day from his home in Daly City, California. They're free because for Vernon Berg, writing utilities is a labor of love. One of the reasons I give the programs out is uh, just so I can be out there uh, participating. <laughs> for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Joining us now in the studio is Karen Lund, president of Teleware Incorporated of Pittsburgh, New York. And sitting next to Karen is Robert Hoffman, who's development manager for Ashton Tate's publishing group based in Torrance, California. Gary? Stuart, you know, back in the late 70s, the uh, heart of this machine, the 8086 processor, was designed with about uh, 640K of uh, main memory. At that time, we figured we could rule the world with that <laughs> much memory. <laughs> but it seems to be a problem now. What is the 640 kilobyte restriction doing to us? It makes it extremely difficult for developers to provide adequate software for, uh, for applications programs these days. Uh, people are always saying, we want more. We want a lot more. We want to go beyond the 640K limit. And there are now two main standards that are used to do this. Uh, one is the LIM spec, which we have used in developing above disk to give you some expanded memory capability. Okay, well, one of the problems, of course, is the monster spreadsheet, which we're going to talk about here, exactly. which takes more than that. And you have, what's the size of the spreadsheet you have in there right now? We have a spreadsheet on here with 20,000 cells in it now. It will not load in 640K. Uh, mm -hmm. We brought it up just to show you. We've got uh, some expanded memory out there that it is using. Uh, not a lot that you can see from above disk, but it does provide you with expanded memory in software. Okay, well, let's back up a minute. Now, the normal solution before you get to above disk of that problem was what? Is to use a board. You go out, you buy a RAM board, uh, an, an EMS board with some expensive memory on it, plug it into your machine, and then you can run your big spreadsheets. And what would the cost of buying that board be, for example? Depending on what you get and how much memory you get on it, it can go up into the $600 range. Okay, and now tell us again what above disk does to solve the problem another way. Okay, above disk emulates, above disk implements the EMS standard in software. It will take any kind of a disk file or AT extended memory, use that as expanded memory, totally transparent to you, the user, and to your application. Now, Karen, how does that affect performance? And you were using, let's say, using a disk file instead of a extended memory, how does it affect A disk file will be, I think our benchmarks show that it, it runs about 60% as fast as uh, an EMS board. Extended memory will run just as fast as, uh, as an EMS board. Okay. Uh, it will, I will also point out it will run off floppies for those machines that don't have access to a hard disk. It's obviously much slower off floppies, but it's there. It's there and it does support the low end user. Karen, I want to ask you if you can pull your disk out and, and, and load uh, Robert's disk. And Robert, if you can take over the keyboard for a minute. Now, you've just come out, Ashton Tate has just come out with this whole package of utilities for DBase users. Tell me what's in that package. This is a group of utilities that we've put together to help the DBase programmer both with his programming and his day-to-day -day computer activities. 
It's broken up into three groups. The first is a series of assembly language modules, which are callable and loadable from DBase. The second group uh, has a database recovery program for damage for corrupted files, power mm -hmm. from power failures, and so on. There's a, a debugging, structuring, cross-reference, symbol table type program, and then a series of, of DOS level maintenance utilities. Okay, can we take a look at them? Yeah, here's a, a bit of fluff that just shows mm -hmm. off a few of the modules uh, for screen control. Uh, there's also one that gives you direct access of the serial part, which could be very useful for writing an auto dialer from DBase. Mm -hmm. um, this one also saves screens if you like. Okay, how about D repair? That's the one that okay. sounds uh, uh, like I might need it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a, a database that we offer up for sacrifice <laughs> okay. that uh, we're going to zap inadvertently, which in DBase just takes care of everything. Um, this is, could also help in if someone trips over the power cord and you... So the situation is they inadvertently lost a whole uh, yeah. file here, okay. Okay. And what are you going to do? Okay, so what we're going to do is bring up the recovery program which will first uh, verify that the header is, is correct and uh, if it can find the valid header and, and allow you to fix it. Uh, then it will go ahead and search uh, all of the clusters on the disk for valid records, pausing whenever it has a question and letting you know that you need to um, run through and, and fill it all up. Robert, what is the utility package sell for? It's $89.95. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like a pretty good price if you corrupt your disk once. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> one, one save is worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Karen, Robert, thank you very much. Now, in just a minute, we're going to take a look at intuitive processing and clairvoyance right on your PC. So stay with us. With us now in the studio is Jay Eisenlor, Vice President of Eris Incorporated of Portland, Oregon. Sitting next to Jay is Ezra Shapiro, Consulting Editor with Byte Magazine. And weighing down the table at the end is our regular commentator, George Morrow. Stuart, as you know, the IBM PC-DOS interface is a pretty old one. It came from CPM, and the CPM interface came from the old time-sharing system, so it's got to be, what, 20 years old mm -hmm. or something like that. I'd say categorically that no one really likes it. It hasn't <laughs> so, gotten any better no. in 20 years. <laughs> and the approach has been recently to replace the whole DOS interface with things like the Digital Research Gem product or Microsoft Windows or whatever. But Jay's product really tries to enhance the, the DOS interface. Can you show us what, what, that's, what that's about? Exactly, Gary. What, what we're doing here is we're actually enhancing DOS with an intuitive processing technology that we call RSA. And what it does is character by character or element by element, it actually syntax checks the, the DOS command line. Mm -hmm. And to show you very quickly um, what it does, as, as I begin to type, I'll just type random characters initially. It just shows the highlighted areas that it doesn't understand. I'm currently in the subdirectory now, and as I type in an N, it automatically completes it because there are simultaneous dictionaries that are running on the system. Is that the clairvoyance element you're talking that, about? That's, that's the clairvoyance element, and it's, it's actually not true clairvoyance. What it's, what it's doing is it, it knows that there's no other file in the system called now. Okay? And what I can do in this system is I can actually invoke, um, actually go out and append um, a memo that I call memo, and as you can see, a choices window will pop up immediately. And without moving from the command line, I can move up and down this window and see that it isn't in the directory that okay, I'm currently in. The problem in. Okay. was as soon as it saw the E, the second character, it knew there was a problem. That's exactly it reversed, right. reversed, highlighted it, and yep. then showed you the possible choices you really had beginning with an M. Th that's, that's exactly right. And all these features are usable. Okay, how do you solve the problem then? I, I invoke another command called locate, and it actually goes out on the system and brings back all the path names that start with ME. And then what I can do is actually choose the one that I want and bring it back down to the control line, and at that point just execute the program. Okay, so the, what are the couple of problems then that detente solves? Well, detente specifically pro, uh, solves the problem of the command line itself. Rather than hitting a return and getting back a bad command or user file name, uh, you're, you're guaranteed by the time you get to the end of the line that you're going to you're going to have a good command line. And you just and can't get away with a mistake, and it'll show you what the mistake. That, was. That's exactly right. Jay, and this this product is a program that's uh, 
blows into memory just stays there. And it's, it's a memory now, resident program, and it actually builds a dictionary of all the user's files and path mm -hmm. names. Okay. Well, what does it sell for? It sells for $75 okay. list price. When you say your intuitive processing technology, what's mm -hmm. it really doing there? What well, do what, what it's doing is it's checking on an 8088 machine at 500 microseconds. It's actually doing a compare against a dictionary. As I mentioned before, in this case, five dictionaries. But it can actually, the technology itself can actually handle up to a megabyte. Ezra, what do you think of this product? Well, it looks like it would make a pretty good safety net for somebody who's unfamiliar with DOS or who's a rotten typist like I am. <laughs> the question I have, though, is that if you're a good typist and you're up to speed on what you're doing in DOS, this thing might get in your way. Uh, in what way? Well, you want to type something other than the choices it wants to offer you. You have a screen of choices coming up. I haven't really seen the product before today, so I don't know whether it's configurable but my snap impression looks like that it, it might be a nuisance to somebody who's real adept at doing what he's supposed to How do. How do you answer that, Jay? Well, um, it is configurable. It's totally configurable. And <clears throat> the whole idea of intuitive processing is to be able to customize according to the way you type. And in this case, I have spell checking on, I have auto choices on, I have clairvoyance on, and I have auto save dictionaries on. Uh, we can turn all those on and mm -hmm. off just as we can in our word processing product as well. And the, and the whole idea of this technology is to be able to customize it according to the way you type. Ezra, in general, talking about utilities, uh, we were talking at the very beginning of the program with Gary. Are utilities around really because programmers don't do the right job in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the question from a user perspective is whether you want to drive a car or whether you want to be an auto mechanic. <laughs> And a lot of these things are solutions to problems that are really a pain to solve when you're using a machine. Um, I don't want to have to learn how to run a program to back up my hard disk. I just want to push a button and know that my data is safe. George, you were nodding your oh, head I no. I disagree <laughs> because uh, in the early days of the automobile, if you wanted to drive one, you had to be a mechanic. You had to be able to change tires, and you had to be able to adjust your spark plugs. And we were at the same point with computers, and that's what. But I mean, ideally, you shouldn't have to be. Mechanical. Well, I'm sure, but the ideal world and the real world are usually two different things. The point is, today, computers are at the same stage as Model Ts, and we still and the people that help us with changing tires. Some guy that came out with <laughs> something that helped you change your tire made could have made some money in those days. And the utility programs are exactly like that. I've corrupted data in my file, and if I hadn't had something like the Norton Utilities, I would be programming for weeks. Did he convince you, Ezra? <laughs> oh, he convinced Yeah, I'm, I'm saying roughly the same thing. What disturbs me is that we do have to do a lot of um, oh, checking and protecting ourselves in a way that is not particularly a lot of fun. And yeah, I'd love to see in the next generation computers smart enough to handle a lot of the things that utilities handle by themselves. We're almost out of time, George. I'll give you 10 seconds. Well, Gary and I uh, date back a ways, and we can see today, I'm sure both of us agree, that things are a lot better than they used to be, and probably another 10 years are going to be a lot better than they are today, and, and, and we'll get closer to Ezra's world. And we've certainly seen some pretty interesting utilities today, actually. Sure. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's Computer News. In the Random Access file this week, IBM and Intel have signed a deal to jointly develop new customized computer chips based on a new design technology called ASIC, Application Specific Integrated Circuitry. The upshot of the deal is that IBM may now move away from its own PC standard in an effort to combat the clones. The IBM Intel deal could establish a new standard around the custom chips and so make it much more difficult for clone makers to copy IBM. The other major effect of a new standard for the next generation of IBM PCs would be confusion in the software market place. IBM also in the news this week with a prediction of lower profits for 1986. If that happens, this would be the first time since the Depression that IBM had declining profits for two consecutive years. The standard for speed computing has always been the Cray supercomputer, but this week ETA Systems of Minnesota announced a new supercomputer, the ETA-10, that can perform 10 billion arithmetic operations per second. That makes it 40 times faster than a Cray-2. The first ETA-10 will be installed at Florida State University in a few months. 
Lotus has formally introduced its much-touted HAL interface for 123. HAL lets you communicate with Lotus in plain English so that you can now command Lotus to graph column 3 as a pie chart. Rather than hitting gtpab6.b9 return xa6.9 return v. HAL also logs all Lotus commands so that you can review what you did and it provides several other Lotus utilities. Time for this week's software review with Paul Schindler. Sure, I can fix my PC myself, but every time I take the skin off that sucker, it makes me nervous. If you're like me and you're not too pleased about having to guess what you're doing inside of an IBM personal computer, check out ServeTech. ServeTech is unprotected, which is nice. It starts with a firm but amusing anti-piracy notice, which I think reflects the kind of spirit that's most likely to reduce piracy. ServeTech does several things. New PC owners fill out a menu of options describing their system. ServeTech shows you the switch settings and the locations of the switches for such a configuration. It offers disassembly advice. ServeTech shows you where the screws are located and shows you how to take apart an IBM PC. Perhaps ServeTech's most useful feature is a diagnostic error interpreter. You learn not only what error messages mean, but you get a step-by-step -step troubleshooting procedure for diagnosis and repair. If a chip is suspect, it blinks on a map of the computer. ServeTech costs $50 and comes from Rylos Technologies in Burke, Virginia. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. The Software Publishers Association has awarded its platinum discs to the two best-selling programs, both of which have sold over 250,000 copies. And the winners were Print Shop from Broderbund and Newsroom from Springboard. Gold discs were also awarded to programs that sold over 100,000 copies. The two top software publishers were Electronic Arts with six winners and Epix with three winners. Microsoft says it will take copy protection off Excel and other Macintosh software packages. Earlier this year, Microsoft dropped copy protection on MS-DOS software. Microsoft said with increasing use of hard disks on Macs, copy protection is no longer in the interest of its customers. Over the summer, the major hacker hunt was for Captain Midnight. Now the most wanted hacker is a man called Pink Floyd, a suspected graduate student who has broken into dozens of campus computer systems from Stanford to MIT. His specialty seems to be breaking into Unix systems, and some investigators suspect he's trying to show how vulnerable Unix systems are to security breaks. Pink Floyd has even called system operators to tell them he's about to break into their system, but so far Pink Floyd is on the loose. Finally, if you're still trying to figure out what to do with your home computer, there's a new book out by Dan Gutman that has a collection of 400 offbeat applications that you probably never thought of. Among the little-known software programs is one written by a Lebanese man for Muslim businessmen who travel a lot. The program automatically calculates the times of day for prayer and the direction of Mecca from any location in the world. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide.